In this video, I have compiled my top 23 favorite decoupage DIYs I have ever done on this channel. So if you're new to decoupage, there are tons of tips and tricks here for you. And if you're not, there are lots of ideas for your next project. In a recent browse in Walmart, I came across these adorable little farmhouse pieces in their wood slice section, I like to call it. I've definitely decoupaged pieces like this before, but I wanted to kind of create a set. So if you wanted to grab several different pieces kind of of the same style, you could set them on a shelf or set them in one section of your house and it would help just enhance your decor. And I didn't want to just decoupage the entire piece on these since we had some little sections that kind of popped out. I wanted to do something different. And we're going to start off just kind of painting everything white. So this way we can have that background pop out with this gorgeous napkin. I let all the pieces dry up really well and then took the napkin. I actually needed two of the napkins for this project. For this pig, I went and applied the napkin over the whole top section. I left two of the legs white, the ear white, and the little tail white. I applied the same method with the other two little wood pieces, just taking sections of the napkin and putting it on little raised sections of our wood cutout here, a little wood slice. So this way, all three of the pieces had the white, paint and they had the napkin they just had it in different sections so if you want to put them like i said on a shelf or if you want to put them in the same area of the house they're going to match and just kind of bring out little pops of design in your home i know what you're thinking brandy what if i do not want to use white as my background well then use black as your background or brown or green but the part where you want to put your napkin on paint that sucker white let that dry, apply your Mod Podge, and then put your napkin on. This is going to help keep your background color, whatever you want that, as well as bring the pops of color out of your napkin that you're attaching onto your piece. Dollar Tree had these cute little Halloween book theme porcelain pieces and I grabbed this sucker because I felt like I could use it for anything because the only thing really Halloween-y on it was a little bat above the center section and I'm like nobody's gonna notice that unless I let them notice it. So let's bring in our beautiful napkin that we're going to use to decoupage this piece. I love this napkin and the gold background on it's so pretty. People if you want to skip this next part go right ahead. It looks fine honestly without being painted but I wanted the pages to actually give the illusion that they were pages so I just took a couple different paint colors and went ahead and dry brushed in a couple little sections to give us that look. I've painted ceramic or porcelain before whichever you want to call it and I've never really noticed how absorbent I guess porous <laughs> this stuff actually is. I really wanted to decoupage the entire book, have the napkin kind of wrapped around that joint and just have the little ornate area where it's like a label showing through. So I grabbed me a little paintbrush and some water and I'm like, I'm just going to trace around it where I feel it with my fingers and then take my nail or a little clay tool and just pull the napkin up like I do all the flipping time. However, it started absorbing right to the piece. Didn't matter how much water I was putting on this napkin. It was like the piece right behind was like, I got this water. <laughs> and sucked it right on up. The napkin was like not getting wet at all. So this is where the skills that I have acquired over a long period of time of winging things comes into play. I just decide to make the best of a bad situation, take that water, take the napkin off of our little piece and trace around what I felt was going to be the spot that our little label was going to be in. And lo and behold, I kind of nailed it. I kind of nailed it. At this point, I was definitely worried about the Mod Podge situation and knowing I had to decoupage this napkin on here, wondering if since it was absorbing the water, was it going to do the same thing with the Mod Podge? 
So I was like, you know what? Against my normal less is more, I'm going to use a whole bunch and pray. And that's exactly what I did. I lathered the piece all on up and then just tap, 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 tap with my finger all around. Once I felt like there was a secure enough hold, I grabbed the sponge and started pressing down because there was a ton of Mod Podge seeping through this joint. And trust me when I'm telling you, it was drying super fast. I could not even believe it. I'm like, let me hurry up and grab the cling wrap because I want those little ornate designs to pop out through the napkin when I try to put my accent on there. But best believe if I didn't take that sponge first to grab some of that extra Mod Podge, this cling wrap would have probably been tearing this napkin to shreds. As I wrap the napkin around the spine, repeating the whole put a lot of Mod Podge on there process, I realized that the napkin was gonna have like this gap on the back of the book. So I did end up taking a little section of the napkin out and then just matching up the extra napkin on the back. So the pattern just made sense. Once this dried, which literally took minutes, I'm, this might be one of the fastest drying <laughs> projects I've ever done, to be honest with you. I went around trimming off our excess napkin. I decided to just put a nice simple label on the front of our book here, picked a design from one of our stamps and pressed it right down in where that label section is that gave us all the trouble. Then I grabbed out my Dixie Belle gilding wax, put a little bit on my finger and went around all those raised sections in our book so that way they popped out. If you don't have this stuff, rub and buff or some glittery paint will give you a very similar effect. <laughs> take a trip to Home Depot because we're going to build our own everything. We're not just going to stuff this into a frame. So we're going to pick up some of this underlayment for $10.69. Look how big this piece is. We're going to cut it down to size. Okay. And we have to grab some trim and people, the cost of wood is a little ridiculous these days, but I love this thin lightweight trim piece here because we get eight foot of it and I ship a lot of things. So this doesn't add too much weight to my packages. Plus it's only $10.20. And keep in mind, Home Depot will cut your wood down for you if you don't have tools at home or want to cut them down yourself. I just clamped the underlayment down to a stable surface and then used my jigsaw to cut out my piece. I then went on a Canva and created a design with a little baby cow. When you're printing these types of designs, you can use regular paper if you want to just put it in a frame. If you plan on decoupaging it like I am, rice paper napkin gift wrap paper they will all work this is a piece of rice paper and i attached it around the edges to a regular size piece of printer paper it works really easy with double-sided tape i did not have any so i used regular tape and gently folded over the edges i knew i was going to cut off anyway here's our little piece of underlayment that we cut if you want to use a dollar tree sign or just shove the little picture in a frame you go right ahead and if you need measurements for this, here you go. I do cut this a little bit bigger to size. I like creating my pieces like this because I am a decorative artist and I do sell pieces. Glass does not ship well for me. So this allows me the ability to decorate a frame completely how I want in my vision and use whatever extras I want and not worry about the glass breaking because it's decoupaged on here. Plus, I wanted to give you guys an idea for those of you that struggle with painting because a lot of you that watch my painting pieces, and I don't know if you noticed, but there's a little barn back there <laughs> and we're going to be doing some barn painting with spring. And I really wanted to give you guys an idea of how you can print something and make it look like you painted it and create your own frame and everything else. So I really got inspired by that little baby cow. <laughs> <laughs> which is why we have our little baby cow in this. And if you're over there like Brandy, I can't paint the barn. I can't digitally create the barn. No worries. I do have printable digital downloads for sale on my website that I create. I actually really love being able to have the ability to completely hand make the wood projects that I create and put 
whatever design I create on those pieces as well. For our medium for this video, we're going to be using Deco Art Decoupage in the matte. And I'm going to be sealing over this with the Glossy Mod Podge. I will tell you all this. I am not going to recommend the rice paper that I use. And here's why. It beautiful for large prints, but I do not care for it for the smaller prints. It really just doesn't. It's thicker than I would recommend when you're decoupaging something smaller. And what I mean by that is if you're cutting this down into little pieces, say you want to section something out, you end up having to go around the edges and sand it down. It's just raised up more than I would care for when I'm decoupaging something. But if you're covering a whole surface from edge to edge, I really love the end result of this rice paper. Just in case you're wondering, I am using a sponge to apply my decoupage and it is a dry sponge. And if you don't have a printer or want to use digital downloads, this idea can be used with Hobby Lobby paper, scrapbook paper, Dollar Tree calendars. You can take wood and create your own custom frame like I did here and just use the idea for whatever makes sense for your home or whatever project you're working on. And right here, I'm just going around the edge with a fan brush, kind of smooshing it in underneath of our rice paper making sure it's all sealed nice and tight once this is dry and that will vary depending on how much mod podge you use it could be 30 minutes it could be three hours it's time to attach our frames so we're gonna need to bring in the miter shears i would not recommend using these for a thicker piece of trim especially if you have hand strength issues or carpal tunnel but for a thin piece like this it's not too bad I do put this on a 45 degree angle and then I dual wield it with both hands as I pinned it. See me taking it off camera. <laughs> I gotta put it in just the right spot to be able to squeeze it on down to get that cut. Ta-da! <laughs> I then repeated the entire process around the whole board. I put the center, like the slanted center piece at the very edge of our picture and then I measured at the very bottom for the same spot and that's how I cut the 45 degree all the way around. You can use a miter saw or whatever is the easiest for you to cut this. I will also recommend for those of you that have carpal tunnel, wrap a hand towel around the edge of this or use a pair of cooking mitts. It's gonna give you a better grip and it's gonna be so much easier to squeeze the end of those miter shears tight and close. Like I said, I wouldn't recommend this for the larger trim, but this is pretty thin and I didn't have a rough time at all cutting this. Once I had all the pieces measured and in the spots I thought they fit great, I painted them up white before attaching them. And I'm gonna use my favorite Typhon wood glue and a little bit of hot glue. You can always come back and staple this in as you want on the back. I have not had a problem making these. I use underlayment all the time. I even create stain art with them. I have some videos with that stuff as well. Do be mindful of where you're putting your frame and be mindful of how you're holding your frame. I got a little bit, I don't know what the word is, handsy with this as I was looking at it and I dropped it and cracked the corner. So I had to take some wood glue in there and then I painted over it once it dried. It was fine. I can't tell that I made a boo-boo with it. We're now going to take some of my favorite clay and this Prima mold. You can use any mold you want. You do not have to use a Prima mold. Put a little bit of cornstarch up in there and then take your clay and mold whatever design you want. I'm going to kind of just do one of these little edges here in the section. I'm not even going to use the whole stripe piece, the whole strip, I should say. We're just doing one little section like this. And I made four of these because we're going to put right in the corners. If you don't want to do this part and your edges, your corners are perfectly fine, then don't even worry about it. But one, I wanted to add a little bit of something to this frame, just customize it a little bit more give you guys the idea, a little bit of inspiration. And two, if you don't want to do this, here's some other little tips for you. Use caulking, use spackling, and just shove in the edges of your corners if there's gaps. Let that dry. Now, if you want to sand it down, I do not recommend using caulking at all. You're going to want to use spackling. So put the spackling in the edges. It will seal up any of your gaps. Caulking does not sand well. I'm using wood glue on the back of here and I'm just kind of tappity tap tap tapping it right in the corner around the edges. 
this is my favorite clay. It is an air dryer clay. So I just let this sit 24 hours. <laughs> Whenever I use it, I gotta let it sit 24 hours. I'm sorry. Oh, it's such a tedious process, but I love using this clay. It always just allows me to make pieces a little bit more customizable. You can bring in your little clay tools and just kind of shape it to make more sense for whatever it is that you're doing. Here I'm just kind of making sure that they sit in the corners and all look like they were actually attached to the frame instead of just kind of being plopped down on the top of it. Let this dry 24 hours and then you're ready for your finishing touches. Now I did want to show you guys that you can sand this. This is one of the reasons why I love this paper clay. Not all clay is created equal, okay? And I do furniture art as well. So this is why I love this stuff. You can sand this. Now this is a high grit sandpaper. I did that on purpose so you could actually see the stripes of the sandpaper in the clay. See how it's really working to sand it. So if you use a smooth piece of sandpaper, it's gonna be buttery smooth on your clay as well. For my finishing touches, I'm just taking and painting these white, letting them dry, and then I'm bringing in the crusty bit paintbrush. Brandy, what's a crusty bit paintbrush? Well, I'll tell you what it is, okay? It is one paintbrush that has been piling up and piling up <laughs> that you have not cleaned in a long time. And then we're gonna use that to distress because little did you know, it actually makes for a really nice way to distress your pieces. For this particular piece of decorative art, I didn't wanna go too heavy on the frame. So I kept it really minimal, just adding a little bit of that farmhouse feel in there. I did want this to look like a picture though. I did want it to look like I painted in one here. So I took some more white paint and just went into the frame around the picture itself to make it look like it's painted. And when I was happy with that, I put a little bit of that black and gray mixture on my finger and went over the little ornate designs in the corners. It's so funny, the things we draw inspiration from and how this little baby cow inspired me to create this piece with this little baby cow. project you can use any glass piece that you want i had this hurricane vase from dollar tree laying around that i had already spray painted with frost glass spray paint and i don't really have a favorite i just grab whatever's the cheapest when it comes to frost glass spray paint we're going to be using this napkin right here and something i never do is actually trim the napkin down with scissors around the design usually i kind of tear it or rip it but for this i want it to be as precise as i could possibly get it and in case you're new here hi my name is brandy and whenever i'm decoupaging a napkin i recommend less is more i try not to just coat huge areas and slap it on there and pray that it doesn't get wrinkly i try to do little section by little section and then i use a sponge especially for something like this because it helps curve it. And no, it's not a wet sponge, it is a dry sponge. I really like using this method because napkins are porous. And if you do put too much Mod Podge on, the napkin is going to have that seep through it. The sponge will catch it on the other side and it will prevent any extra spreading, tearing, or ripping of your napkin. Another method you could use is like the cling wrap or saran wrap or whatever, and you roll it up in a little ball and then you can like move it all over the place. That will give you a nice smooth finish as well. But I found that if I use too much Mod Podge in a spot, it will actually rip the napkin with <laughs> when I'm trying to smooth it out. So this just works best for me. There is no right or wrong way to Mod Podge or Deco Podge, however you want to say it. You just do what works for you. And I'm always offering tips, tricks, and little things that help me along the way to help you possibly make better projects for your home or to sell or for gifts or whatever. For this next part, we're gonna take some yellow mica powder and some Mod Podge, and we are gonna smoosh it all up together really, really good. I wanted to create this area on the frosted glass that kind of faded into the napkin and the frosted glass, kind of making it look like it's all just one piece. And I wanted it to be a little shiny. So the mica powder is gonna give me that effect. If you do not want that, you could use regular paint 
and some baking soda. Mix that together to still get a texture. Use the same technique with a sponge and pounce it. And you can still do the fade like this. This would be super cute on a mason jar as well. And you could use with any napkin, any color really. And I took some Dollar Tree stamps that matched the napkin and kind of placed it in between. There was some spots I felt needed a little something to really kind of blend the napkin into the mica powder and the mica powder into the frosted glass. Let's take these one by threes and turn them into some tags. And people don't stress, if you don't have this laying around, you can pick these up very inexpensively at Home Depot. And the length of these joints is completely up to you. I decided to make one shorter and I started by cutting that first and then I just put it on top the other one measured to make sure the other one was slightly bigger and cut it down. Now, if you notice, see how you're getting to the end of your board and this is wiggly? Little trick, put a larger piece of wood on the opposite side hold it in place and then cut it down so this way you don't worry about your little fingers getting cut for our little corner pieces at the top of our tag I'm using a 45 degree angle cut on the miter saw and this piece is super tiny so I didn't want to use the little clamp that the miter saw had and chance it flipping up I took another piece of wood and held it down while I cut it. And people, this goes without saying, mistakes will be made, you know, okay? It's trial and error. It's not a perfect science here. I definitely <laughs> botched this my first shot. And I, I've cut a lot of wood, so I had to make adjustments and, you know, just work it on in. But eventually, eventually I got this. We're not done yet. We're not done. We got to clamp this down and drill a hole in these suckers to create our tag look. So we're going to need to bring in the drill and you're going to need to make sure you got a drill bit that fits the size of the job. I am using this one right here. Okay, this one. And no, I didn't find the center. I just stuck that sucker right down on top of the wood and went, this looks good and started drilling. Okay. This literally takes like two seconds. It's definitely the easiest part of the creating process. Once you're done that, sand them all down. I used a 400 grit sandpaper to get these nice and buttery smooth. But I do want to share with you this. Whenever you're drilling a hole through something, a lot of times the back will get chipped up. I just pulled the pieces off and we're going to hide over this with some black chalk paint. It's really not a big deal. These are going to be rustic anyway. And if they're not, you could use white paint and just sand it down even more to smooth it out. I wasn't stressing it, you know what I'm saying? But you guys do, you know, I'm just telling you what I'm doing for these pieces right here. For our design on the front, we're going to decoupage these. Are you surprised? Because you shouldn't be. Now, today I'm going to show you how to blend in your napkin so that it looks like it's part of the wood. And to do that, we're going to use some white matte acrylic paint and some water. But first... <sighs> Sorry, <laughs> I think I rewatched it like three times. Like, why am I the only one that has to suffer through the weird ASMR noises and you guys just to get to have everything muted? Anyhow, I thinned out this paint a lot. It is going to just give us a light coverage over the wood. And for those of you that are like, Brandy, why do we even need to do this at all? Painting your wood is going to allow that napkin design to pop through. If you just leave it completely blank, you're going to completely see the wood grains through the napkin and it's going to not look very blended. It's going to look a little off. If you give it a little bit of a white hue like this, it allows that wood grain to still shine through your napkin, but not so overpowering that the design is kind of canceled out. I hope that makes some sense. Normally I would just completely paint it white, but I really want the napkin design to show through and look like it's completely part of our little tags we have here. To create that blend, so this way it's not just black on the back, white on the front, and then we have some splotchy pieces where we have that wood grain, I'm taking some of Antiques Waverly Wax and a little sponge and just kind of going over the whole piece. And people, don't let me hold you back. You wanna do this with transfers, you wanna do this with your Cricut and create a little vinyl piece on here. The ideas are truly endless with these little tag pieces. I just thought it was a really cool idea to take some scrap wood you have laying around and create something different. Now, as you notice, I am not 
bringing that wax on the front where we have that paint. I'm just blending it in. And by the way, these little, you know, pl plunger pieces, <laughs> they fit in this hole perfectly and in like two seconds cover the whole thing up. That really saved me a lot of time. Look at that. I let these dry for about an hour before starting our decoupage aspect, but I wanted to share with you that if you wanted to leave these just like this or create these so you could resell them and people could DIY them however you want, that'd be a great idea. Now let's bring in our napkin, okay? And if you're new to me, hi, my name is Brandy. I have napkin issues. And I also sell napkin bundles on my website. If you're ever interested in anything you see me decoupaging or using napkins with, you can check that out. I always have some sort of bundle available there. For our medium, I'm gonna be using just regular matte Mod Podge. You can grab these at Dollar Tree. And for our application, I'm gonna be using a fan brush. I like to use these because they're super thin around the edges. And whenever I'm doing napkins, it helps me to double check to make sure we have a nice bond to our piece with the napkin without tearing up the edges on the napkin using another product. You guys can use whatever works for you. And people, if you're looking for more information on decoupage, I have a bunch of content on that. I can link them down in the description box. Go ahead and check them out. Keep in mind, they are a little tutorialish and lengthy, but they will help you gain some more information on how to do this technique. To help me apply our napkin, I'm just using a dry sponge here and pressing down. This is also soaking up any of the Mod Podge that is pressing through the napkin. And people, in case I didn't mention this before, the iron ore method, whenever you're decoupaging, it's the most flawless way to attach a napkin to minimize wrinkles. But since I create content for you at home, I like to use the sponge method. It's a little bit faster for me. I took the X-Acto knife after the napkin was completely dry and some sandpaper to get everything off. You do not want to sand or try to cut this until it is dry. And you also don't want to apply your top seal until everything is completely dry. But here they are. I love how these turned out so much. And to start off, we're gonna mix this antique parchment and white with a little bit of water to give this a faux bleach wood look. Now, recently I had a subby make a comment about, you know, could I do more of a tutorial style? You know, I guess I can get a little flashy with the editing and I'm a little speedy. Um, that's just because I'm trying to, you know, stay on point with what's going on and don't dilly dally. But you will notice in this video, I slow it down just to go a little bit. This is about as tutorial-ish if I can get. So if for those of you who want me to slow it down more, I don't know if I'm capable of it. This is what I got. So as you can see, I'm still showing y'all how I just basically whitewash that. And I'm using a tumbling tower block for it to sit on and just dry so it's not touching anything. Once it dried, I'm taking a little tiny bit of the white and just doing the center. This is all gonna make sense as we go along, but you don't wanna cover the whole thing. You're just gonna do the center of your sections. So this way, once we put our laser print paper on here, it's going to really look like that piece, you know, belongs in the center and everything else is faded out. If it's too dark for you, please feel free like I'm doing here with the paper towel. Use it to wipe some off. You know, my paintbrush does not listen to me or care about my feelings and just rolls everywhere. It feels like going. Let that dry about 20 minutes and then bring in your Mod Podge. It doesn't matter what sheen. Just pick a sheen. Doesn't matter. Now, take your laser print. You print it out from your laser jet printer cut them up make sure that they're measured all this stuff i pr i made these myself well not really i use canva i picked the images i pr put them in the canva thing and then i printed it out on a laser jet printer on a single piece of paper that's how i did this <laughs> but the whole idea i created yes you're going to cut them all up in pretty little sections and then we are going to just 
place them down where you want them in the middle of the white make sure they're as centered as you possibly can get them and then let this dry overnight or at least six to eight hours with fan blaring on it do not for those of you who are impatient like me i know it's hard i listen i feel your struggle i feel your pain but let this dry people please let it dry then use whatever makes you fuzzy inside a sponge i'm using a paper towel rag would work put some water on it it does not matter if it's cold or hot it does not matter i probably wouldn't use hot water though just you know come on put some lukewarm water in a bowl little bit of wetness then we're going to just press it on our little transfer and then rub 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 be careful not to rub 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 too much because you're going to rub 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 off your little you know we don't want to do that we don't want to rub off the transfer we're just going to rub it down to the last layer now for this i did not care if it got a little bit messy because it's supposed to be vintage that's the style of this that's how i was going i really like making rustic vintage looking things it is definitely an aesthetic that i am a huge fan of but as you can see these are stunning like how beautiful are these coming out i simply love them and just content listen i know for those of you that are like i'm trying to do this tutorial -ish, so we're slowing it down okay so you're seeing more you know i'm just trying to be a little repetitive here you know stay on you know making sure i'm explaining this properly and you're going to continue with the whole block and rub 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 okay once you have it all rubbed off to the point that you are happy with your transfer then you are going to just get all your little bits get all the crusty bits off of everything because once you're happy with it you don't want to seal it with the mod podge this is a little i don't know it's a little rough coarse sponge that i got from dixie bell it's i don't know it's got like a roughish outside you know and then i'm just using it to kind of get all the little crusty bits off and making sure that it's all nice and smooth before i apply my sealer however before we throw our sealer on here i like to add some accents accents are like my favorite thing to do like they're the thing i like to do after it's kind of finished and you could really leave it alone the way that it is but then you feel like you got to take it one extra step and you can't control yourself you got to just put something on there even if it doesn't really need it that's my favorite part <laughs> so i put a little bit of antique waverly wax in some water just to kind of dim it down so it wasn't so dominant and dark and give this more of a wood grain feel around the edges to really bring out that laser cut in the white and make it look very blended and finished it up with some distressing started off this palette trinket box by clipping one of these palettes in half and I use these little wire clippers I picked up from Hobby Lobby. Then I cut the another one, not the same one, another one so I could use the center pieces. I used my jigsaw for this. You guys could use a miter box. That would work just fine as well. Just measure it. Make sure they fit in there. I got these little brackets from Home Depot because we are going to ply them so that they can open and close our lid. This was a little painstaking, people. I am not going to lie. It's tiny and i ran into this little i don't know what it is but i was unhappy i realized i had to make something for these screws to grab onto because they would go straight through the palette and then poke out extremely bad on the sides so i hot glued and gorilla glued i love gorilla grujo gorilla <laughs> i love gorilla glue 
gel and put this on there. I let it dry and now you can see that once I put these screws in here, they're going to have something to grab onto and they're not going to just be sticking out the back of the if palette. If you go to do this, make sure you drill them in slowly because if you do it too fast, it will split through the whole piece quickly. I will show you here. I kind of did that. <laughs> so learn from my mistakes. So see, it started there and I was like, oh, Brandy, oh, slow it down. And I ended up doing it way too much. Look at that one. Just split completely through. I just left it. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to worry about it. Nobody's going to see this. It's my trinket box. I'm holding on to it. But be gentle when you're screwing them in and that won't happen to you. I'm using, now you can use whatever you want. I know Gorilla Glue Gel is a beast when it comes, when it comes <laughs> to holding stuff together. I did a try it Tuesday at the beginning of the year. It's a series I run and I tested that gel and it's not going anywhere. So I'm confident that this is going to be very sturdy. When you're doing this, you should have a smaller piece and you want to put that in your bottom and then you should have one that's a little bit longer. Measure it so it fits in there snugly so that your top piece is literally snugged in there on the ends so you don't have to hold or press it like so your bottom piece will be cut a little bit short and your top piece will be cut a little bit long and again once you have this put together you can decorate it however you want this is how i rolled with it people this is my example and i did not care for the gaps here you could completely leave it like this there's nothing wrong with it it's fine but i had to be extra so I started taking some pieces. Here's a popsicle stick. I'm just trimming it and gluing them to the side. I spared you the spray painting on this one. You're welcome. <laughs> but it's just some lavender spray paint, two times Rust-Oleum. You know, that's that's my stuff. And then I started with my clay and put it in a Prima mold. And this clay, I tell you what. I've been using this other stuff for quite some time and just started using this. This stuff is so easy to work with. Oh my God. I can't even express to you all. If you're going to use some clay, this stuff is like, oh my gosh. It just, it is so easy to work with. It's unbelievable. I am taking wood glue and then attaching this, pressing it gently, trying not to get little fingerprints in it. And then I am going to make some little accents for the top once I did the whole trim around the sides. I like using wood glue for this and you're welcome to use a good, I would not use hot glue. I just, that is not a good idea in my opinion. You do you. I will support your bad decisions. <laughs> but anyhow, I also think Gorilla Glue Gel will be just fine. I picked out some little trinkets. I purchased these from Amazon and fit it in the clay and then pulled it out and of course <laughs> squeezed way too much out of the Gorilla Glue Gel and then placed it in the center. I let all of this dry overnight and then came back the next day, mixed up some of my plaid apple barrel paints to get this beautiful color and we're going to now work on the painting process so this is my paper <laughs> this is my paper decoupage and I picked up this paper from Hobby Lobby for $1.99. It was not on sale. It makes me want to cry. But I cut it in half and made sure that it went in the center of these. I didn't want it going all the way to the edge. You'll see the, you know, see how it's on here. I didn't want it going all the way to the edge. I wanted to be able to see that purple. And then here is my paper for the top, my Tim Holtz paper, and we are going to just put this on the top. And I do put the paper slightly over the edges on the top. So this way that the top looks like it's one cohesive piece. And this stuff is so easy to use. Some more Tim Holtz. <laughs> I can't help myself. 
And I literally feel like I'm in love with all of this stuff. Do not use a hot glue gun for this. Okay. Learn from me. It didn't, it peeled right off. Okay. It peeled right off. I went and had to, I didn't show you, but I had to go back and use my Gorilla Glue gel. I'm just being real with y'all. Okay. I'm not trying to, you know, sugarcoat this. Don't, you know, don't make the mistakes that I'm making. Do it right now. The little piece, for whatever reason, that tree, it stayed on there with the hot glue, but that other piece did not. It came right off. You can use an X-Acto knife to take this off, or you can use some sandpaper, whatever you feel comfortable using. I like to go over this and take some Mod Podge to get any little fraying really kind of nailed down so it looks nice. And then when I was all finished, I started to kind of dirty up the piece with my paint and my apple barrel mixture. And also went in with some antique Waverly wax to get that dirty brown. I like to call it dirty brown in there, but kind of looks like a little bit of egg. Anyhow, and then we're going to go over it with some gilding wax to add just a little bit of shine to this. thrifted piece I wanted to create like a little shelf lip on here and took a shim I bought a pack of shims from Home Depot very cheap and what is expensive right now so go run and grab some of these you can use if you have these wire cutters from Hobby Lobby you can use these now it takes a little bit of elbow grease but you can definitely cut these with these wire cutters if you have a miter box feel free to use that or some other people use um, I don't know what those things are, but there are other things you can use to cut them. But I just used some Gorilla Glue gel and some hot glue to attach this and sanded down the little areas to get to the bare wood. I feel like it sticks better when you're wood on wood versus like shiny paint. And then adding your sticky stuff, like, I feel like it would come off a little bit easier. It's a personal preference. You do you. I'm just sharing what I do. Here's the clay. Oh, I did put it in here. Yeah, I forgot. I did all the clay at one time, people. And then I divvied up the film throughout the video. So this way it all went with each project. But I did the clay all at one time. So that is the clay that we are using now. I love this stuff and I will probably be using this forever. It works so well and I cannot believe how easy it peels off. The other stuff I cannot peel off with my fingers like that. It actually hurts my carpal tunnel. <laughs> so this stuff is so easy to manipulate. I used some wood glue to attach this on the top here and did sand down around the little heart just a little bit. Off of camera, you do not see me do this, but I fill in the back of that heart with some wood filler and let this dry. See, here it is right here. I sanded it down so it's really solid. That is on there so, so good. This is my napkin decoupage. And if you're not familiar with napkin decoupaging, there's usually two layers on the back of your napkin you need to take off. The first one you take off and you're like, oh, it's just one layer and that was easy. But then there's a second hidden layer under there and you need to get that off. I have forgot to get that off. And if you use enough Mod Podge, it doesn't matter too much, but it definitely kind of can fray a little bit more if you don't get that off. Now I was lucky enough to have Plaid send me an amazing box full of goodies and these decoupage items were in there. I love this little squeegee. That's what I'm calling it. It's a squeegee. I love that little rubber thing. It really gets in the cracks so good when you're trying to put something on. Now, I want to show you all a little trick. I'm not sure for those of you who do or do not decoupage or if you're going to decoupage after watching this video because you're so inspired. If you're aware of this little trick, 
once you get your decoupage or your mod podge I should say in place and say you come to the end and you want to get it off and you're like usually I use an exacto knife depending on the space but this just happens to be I wanted to keep this very 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 neat and I'm taking some water on a paintbrush and it wets the napkin so we can easily tear look at this it just comes right off so we can easily so if you want to smoothly get rid of your napkin and make it look very neat add some water on there if it's in a space like this because it's not always sometimes you need to use an exacto knife or use a piece of sandpaper but this is another little trick some water on a paintbrush and then go over it with your mod podge i couldn't just leave the drawers empty we had to you know freshen them up so i took some paper i was gonna put some napkin in there but i was like eh, it's a little repetitive you know so i'm like let's put some paper in here and throw some more mod podge on it so now it's as hard as a brick in there <laughs> so stiff anyhow and then added on some more napkin around the little embellishment i put at the top i felt like it was a little plain and i you could i could have left it you know but i just i didn't want to then thought let's add our antique waverly wax honestly the piece looks really cute like this but i wanted it to look very old and just give it that whitewashed end look and started with blending the antique Waverly wax on here and then went over it with the white Waverly chalk paint and this took several times layering don't let nobody fool you like this this is not easy peasy lemon squeezy over here like this is fade blend layer let it dry repeat the process <laughs> after you wait for the drying i hate waiting for things to dry but anyhow when you're patient enough after you're layering and you're making sure you're not completely painting over your napkin <laughs> it starts to look pretty and then i added some gilding wax to finish it off This idea is a little eccentric and I've maybe only done two styles of decoupage like this twice, not this exact thing. It's not going to be for everyone, but some of you are going to love it just as much as I do. We're going to create a look with this and get a little artsy fartsy that's going to seem like the vase piece itself is being broken open to reveal decoupage underneath. And people, this is that multi-surface paint. I absolutely love this. Three coats on this. I did leave some areas where you can see at the bottom there's some brush strokes there so you can see through a little bit. If you want it to be a little bit more solid, obviously do more. You'll see why I left it like this later. Here is the beautiful napkin that I picked for this project and I want to get the little, you know, bumpy bits <laughs> off the bottom here. So I'm just using the water and a paintbrush to get a nice precise line and then I'm also doing the same thing to kind of go around the florals here to get a nice precise line of different ways I want the florals to go because I'm going to piece this together since it's large and it's round I want it to make sure that this kind of all went up and down instead of like tilting sideways which is what usually happens if I just try to wrap the napkin around the piece and I do want to mention that if you need your whole napkin and don't want to get rid of those little bumpy bits on the edge you can iron or press them and they'll flatten out even if you mod podge them, honestly, depending on the surface, you can't really notice them. Once you're all finished with that, this is where things go a little sideways, okay? Let that dry and then grab you some tissues. Now I've used fabric and I've used paper towels to do this before and I've used tacky glue once and... <laughs> 
I use Mod Podge. Okay, so I'm taking a little bit of water and about two tablespoons of Mod Podge and I put them in the water. I want it to look like this is kind of ripping above the decoupage, like being pulled open to reveal something. So I'm taking two different colors to make a brighter, more dominant color than the napkin. Like everything's kind of blending into this. Then we're gonna take our napkin and just start dunking it in there, squeeze out the excess and tapity tap 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 in <laughs> all around where that napkin that we decoupaged on there ends. And people believe it or not, this is sticking on here. You know, I'm making sure that the napkin that I'm dipping in there isn't overly saturated. Let me just side note, okay? I think it's really funny how I started off the video as I'm editing and I'm like, I got gloves on. And here where obviously gloves would be great, I decided to be like, muck it. <laughs> and I'm just knuckles deep in that water there. <laughs> I've been living with dyed blue finger <laughs> for two days anyhow let this dry overnight okay it's gonna need it and then it should look something like this and it's gonna be crusty if you touch it it's gonna be stiff and like i said you could use tacky glue to put in the water as well that would work or some fabric stiffener that'll probably do a great job too so obviously we can't leave it like that right we gotta blend it in there make it look like a vase at some point so i'm gonna take some calcium carbonate and some joint compound with a little bit of paint to give us a textured paint. I'm taking some colors to blend up to try to match the color of the napkin. And please keep in mind the way I'm doing the color variations is completely up to my preference of how I want to create this piece of art. You guys do your art vase however makes sense for you. I, again, am going for the look of this being kind of ripped open to reveal a beautiful piece of decoupage under the vase. Also, you don't need a fancy schmancy like clay mixing thing like I have here. You could use a spoon, a popsicle stick. It does not matter. I just happen to have that sitting right on hand. I pick up these packs all the time from Ross so I have these laying around. Once I had that all mixed up I then took this blue mixture and just dabbed tapity tap 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 <laughs> everywhere all over the napkin all the way up to like the neck of the vase because I'm going to kind of create an ombre look at the very top and I even took some of that color and popped it in around the napkin so it looked like this was really all one piece the colors just blended in. I then mixed a little bit of white with the textured paint or textured <laughs> joint compound and the carbonate. So that was also textured and met them in the middle of the neck of this vase and gently blended them together. I let this completely dry, which took a few hours and then came back in with that textured white paint and just dry brushed over everything even some spots on the napkin so real quick before we get to the reveal remember how when i initially showed you the way i painted the vase i said i only did a couple layers and you could see at the bottom that there were some brush strokes so obviously we have our decoupage portion on there and there's more paint that i'm putting on the top right now so if you were to put some fairy lights or a little tea light you're definitely not going to see anything popping through the top because we have even more layers on the top now however that's not going to be the case for the decoupage portion i absolutely love how this piece turned out it's so unique and creative it's just a different way for you to be a little artsy fartsy with your decoupage and your glass decor. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of it. We're gonna need two Dollar Tree palettes for this project. I'm using this as a little tabletop decor piece. You could absolutely hang this up. It would work either way. It's super versatile, but you will need to attach your palettes. There are several different ways you can go about this. I'm just taking a tumbling block and some tacky glue and some hot glue for this popsicle sticks would work as well and you could also put one straight down the center i decided to just do two tumbling blocks one on each section that popped out i found this little home sign and several others like it at dollar tree a while back and i grabbed several <laughs> because why not and i got fear of missing out you know what i'm saying believe it or not 
looks are deceiving this sucker was very hard to dismantle i sped this up to like six times because you know you would have been watching me for a hot minute get this off this little piece of metal there were some clumpy chunky bits of glue on the edge i got annoyed by that real quick and just removed some and the rest i was like nobody's gonna know but me so we're just gonna leave it okay we're just gonna leave it but you remove your glue clumpy bits if you want okay mine are some of mine are still dangling on the pieces i arranged our little home pieces on our palettes in the shape of a square i also had a really cool idea for this as a long wall piece but this next portion oh yeah i'm busting out the napkins <laughs> This next portion is going to take me some time and I knew it. So I wasn't sure how long that was going to take. And I knew the larger this project was going to be, the more time it was going to take. Because I really wanted to share the idea of how to decoupage like this. So here we go. If you've never decoupaged with a napkin before, you want to get all the sneaky layers off the top decorative layer. There are several ways you can go about this. One of my favorite is just to tear and then it reveals the corners. You could also take a piece of painter's tape and put one on each side and pull it or a little bit of Mod Podge in between your fingers and it makes them a little sticky and then that helps you be able to separate them as well. And before I get questions in the comments, this napkin is not in my napkin bundles on my website, but it will be come spring. Okay, I do sell napkin <laughs> bundles on my website. We're going to take a little paintbrush, put some water, and get all the writing and the bees off. Well, as many of the bees as we can. I really just wanted the sunflowers. You can also tear your napkin. I love doing that as well. But when you want to get something really specific or make the edges frayed, the water just helps that go along quicker. And it allows for extremely precise details when you're doing something like this. What are we doing? You may be asking yourself. We are going to take the designs and then place them around our palette in specific sections to just allow them to pop out around the houses. And I wanted to share this idea because sometimes you only got one napkin or sometimes you only have specific designs on that napkin that you want to use for whatever your project is. And being able to take this idea and how I am trimming the sections around the house and then placing them on the palette is going to give you a better idea of how you can create that look with whatever you're decoupaging. Don't feel like you cannot create a larger piece when you only have something small. Once I was happy with all the sections that I had pieced apart, I then grabbed our Mod Podge and use whatever medium you want for this. I am familiar with Mod Podge. I use it all the time and I really like using it on my smaller craft projects. The fan brush really gets in around the edges when you're going back and you're checking your napkin application or if you're using tissue paper because the edges of the fan brush are really thin so it can really fit in tiny little pieces and smush extra medium in there without causing a lot of issues. I'm just taking my fingers to press this down. There are so many tiny sections. I didn't really want to call in anything to help me and possibly chance the napkin getting stuck to a sponge or a little piece of plastic or a roller that I was using to apply this. So I just took my fingers and tappity tap tap tapped it right on down into place. One thing I have also been trying to tell everyone is if you have a napkin that has a neutral background like this one, you can get away without painting your background. A lot of times you paint your background white, it helps the napkin pop out. But when you have something like this, you can completely get away with just placing the napkin down in sections and it will look like it is blended right onto the piece, especially if you're matching up the napkin precisely. So it looks like it's connecting from one to the other instead of overlapping certain sections. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about right here where you can see I connected the green with the sunflower so that way it just all matched up and looked like one whole section. One thing I didn't show as I was going through the process is I continued to plop the little houses down where I wanted them and then 
decoupage, plop the house down, decoupage, just to make sure I wasn't overlapping. And I was also trying to save as much time with the film as I could. So this way you guys weren't constantly seeing me just put the houses right back onto the palette. And then in this frame, <laughs> I didn't remove the house in the one little section but people honestly if you have a whole piece of paper or a whole tissue paper or a whole napkin to cover the section and you want to just cover the whole piece and put the houses in those spots you go right ahead this idea is like I said for people who only have a small napkin a small design a small piece of paper whatever it is and you want to do a larger piece I want you to know that you can absolutely accomplish those looks with minimal design and what really inspired this was the sunflower on this stencil I wanted to cover the O up with it okay <laughs> so I was like I have to have a sunflower napkin around here so I went looking for this napkin I knew it was going in my bundles come spring and I'm like I can only spare one napkin the struggle I might spare another one <laughs> I might spare another one I let everything dry and then took my little sander and just went around trimming everything off. Once you've sanded everything down, if you want to go over it with the sealer, you go right ahead. You can also add in some accents on here if you want. I decided to just leave it exactly like it was. Take my tacky glue and put everything into place. And I absolutely love how this turned out. Picked this joint up at my favorite thrift slash consignment store and thought for a dollar we can turn this into something amazing. For this little number, it had two sides. One side's a chalkboard, the other side someone painted these strawberries on, and I'm sorry whoever painted it, but it's getting a coat of Dixie Bell's cotton. I spared you the painting. You're welcome. No need to thank me. This isn't what you're here for. This, however, this is what you're here for. Usually when I'm going to attach a clay piece, I sand prior and then paint after. But with this piece, I figured someone is going to be holding this in their hands and they're going to be able to see any little tiny inconsistencies with the paint. So I figure paint, sand, then attach. This is my favorite clay that I use. I do have it linked down in my Amazon store. I do have an Amazon store now. I've had so many people ask so many questions about what I use, which is what. It's down there. Go check it out. Support the channel. Much love and much appreciation, people. Hopefully this will help you on your DIY journey when you're interested in the things I'm using on the channel. The main reason I love this clay is it is so easy to work with right out the package. It doesn't require any extra kneading, really. And look how beautiful that came out. And I didn't even use cornstarch on that tiny mold. But you might want to use cornstarch, so use the cornstarch, make sure it doesn't stick. I was being a rebel here and I, I took a chance, okay, I took a chance. You can also do this as well if you see any pieces hanging over, use your X-Acto knife just to cut that extra clay off so this way it's molded perfectly to the section that you want to attach it to. And I use tight bond wood glue to attach it. And look, I dropped it and it still held its shape, okay? Look, it's there. We're gonna just now attach this piece. Also, another little tip, feel free to use spackling or caulking if you want to cover up the holes. I was being extra here and creating a shabby chic rustic piece and wanted to add the little embellishments on the top and the bottom and I figured it would just cover the imperfection pieces up that I didn't want. Had this napkin laying around and I thought, we're gonna do it. I actually envisioned this when I seen it in a thrift store. I was like, I know what I'm putting on there and exactly what I'm doing with this. So I broke the napkin up into pieces and started lightly applying Mod Podge in certain areas and then using my sponge to press it on to not get any rip. Now I've had a person or two tell me that this technique has actually ripped their napkin. I do question how much Mod Podge are you using, okay? Because I've told you light ap applications, okay? Light, light applications, pressing, and then gentle rubbing. If you're gonna pull on that Mod Podge and then press your sponge on there, that napkin's gonna rip, okay? I'm not judging you, but stop crapping on my technique, okay? It works. Look how beautiful this is. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Not 
everything works for everyone, but you see me do it. I have a decoupage video. Check that out if you want more information on how I do sponging with decoupage. I absolutely love it. I'm sorry for those of you that have tried it and had issues. To tie in the whole piece, I just took different colors of browns and blended them. And then I'm using some mica powder to bring in the bright colors of the napkin. It's a very light powdery substance. It's also got some sparkles in it, so be mindful, it makes a mess. To finish this off, I'm gonna add in some Dixie Bells Black Gilding Wax and go over our little appliques that we put here and a little bit of distressing around the edge to make it look like it's aged and it's been around for a long time. You know, that rustic feel. And for that final mwah, we're gonna add just a little bit of gold mica powder. It was in really good condition and all I really need to do was get rid of this paint on the side and kind of make it all one color. Now we're going to decoupage this gem with this beautiful napkin that one of my subscribers, Flilly Girl, sent to me. Thank you so much. Look how pretty this is, people. I love that y'all love me. It means so much. But before we go busting out the Mod Podge, we're going to need to paint the edges. Remember, this is colorful theme. So I'm stretching myself here and going beyond my normal and taking some yellow and putting around the edges. Oh, yes, yellow. I was happy. I was nervous, but I was happy with the way that this turned out. But I gotta tell you, I was scaring myself. For the Mod Podge application, I just applied a little from the bottom to the top and pressed with the sponge as I went up and my fingers. Once it was dry, I took sandpaper and just shaved down around the edges. If you wanna use water and then shave down around the edges, you go right ahead. Took some of these half wooden beads, glued them onto the sides, painted them blue. We're gonna also add a little bit of twine and some green you know, green ribbon, green vine ribbon from Hobby Lobby around the top. And that's going to be it for this one, people. People, check out this clock. It was only $3, so I had to grab it. We're gonna take it apart though and get all the bits out of it like this battery that we have no idea how old it is, okay. Now it's time to gather all the pieces that we're gonna need to turn this clock into a wall shelf hanger thingy decor piece. And I grabbed this from Hobby Lobby, it was on sale. You know, they got their little sales, but the original price tag was $2.99. I had this piece laying around that I grabbed from some local store that I seen it was only 99 cents. I'm like, yeah, we're gonna grab this. It's a piece of solid wood. Why not? I can absolutely turn this into something else. To remove the little stickers, I'm just using my heat gun and a little clay tool to peel the suckers off. If you got some glue going and want to use that after you take that off, get right ahead. I felt like this was good enough. And here is our big piece of wood that I cut down to size to house the clock and to set our shelf piece on. We're gonna paint all of these up using some Waverly's white chalk paints. And people, of course, use whatever chalk paint makes you feel fuzzy inside. I like the result Waverly gives me 99% of the time. And plus, I'm still out of my Dixie Belle white. <laughs> yeah, anyhow, moving on. We're going to need to bring in the painter's tape so we can actually trim out just the front of this clock, okay? I did not want to paint the whole clock white. I just want it to do the front so we could decoupage it, giving it a nice clean background. If you're struggling with taping something that it's not actually straight, 
just oh. a little tip you can tear the painter's tape and do section by section and it really really does line up perfectly and in case you're wondering why i'm using chalk paint over acrylic paint it just eliminates the amount of layers and gives a better coverage plus if you feel like you want it to be smoother you can sand down chalk paint acrylic paint not so much next we're attaching our little shelf piece to the big piece of wood right on the top and i left that bare so this way that wood glue went right into our bare natural wood and then i'm gonna bring in the stapler so we can pop a couple of staples right in the back here and of course the amount of staples you use is entirely up to you i did three well i technically did four because that middle sucker did not go in there very evenly so you know i had to go back and adjust and so i have warm fuzzies because i plan on selling this in my vendor space i am going to clamp this sucker right on down and let it dry overnight while that's drying we're going to go ahead and decoupage the front of our clock and i do want to let you know that anytime you take painter's tape and line up something to trim it off if you remove that painter's tape and it's uneven don't be afraid to take more painter's tape to make an adjusted line and then repaint over it so it is even i hope that makes sense here is our beautiful napkin we're going to be using i only have a couple of these left most of these got sold in most of my napkin bundles that i had and i am lucky enough to have just a few left so i wanted to put this right on the clock and right in the center so we could use that beautiful sunflower cluster here so i'm just lining it up and then i'm folding the napkin back up and just cutting a little tiny hole right in that corner for our decoupage portion i like to say it less is more whenever you're decoupaging a napkin onto anything and i usually go little section by little section and i knew it was going to be difficult with this piece because i had the hole in the center of the napkin so i made the judgment to just do half a napkin on one side and then half the other and for those of you that are just like brandy why don't you just smear mod podge all over the whole thing i have found that with my experience of doing this whenever i put a lot of mod podge because i use such a thin amount with napkins it will dry and then i will have sections of the napkin that do not attach well so i like to do it little by little and if i use too much in certain sections then we'll have clumps and when i am trying to press down to apply the napkin to make sure it is secure onto our project it will tear so i did half the top napkin and use a little bit of cling wrap and gently press down on our piece and did the same thing at the bottom and gently press down onto the piece and i allowed this to completely dry before i came in with a high grit sandpaper because this is metal i didn't want to use an 80 grit i used a 400 grit to take off the edges now it's the next day and our piece is all dried up so we're going to need to attach our hangers which i'm going to use these saw tooth metal hammer and hangers these are my favorites once these are in place we're gonna take little screws to screw in our nice rustic looking hook so we're gonna need to bring in our drill and it goes without saying that if you're using a thin piece of wood like this you know it's a little one inch joint you're gonna want to make sure that whatever screws or nails you're using are short so they don't pop through the back hole okay it's just a little reminder i know you guys need help remembering things so do i i got your back okay i got your back at this point in the project i still wasn't sure if the clock actually worked you know what i'm saying and you could leave it like this it's gorgeous just like that i'm not going to shocker i had these stamps from dollar tree and i just grabbed four of them i put one at 12 one at three one at six and one at nine and i sealed over it once the stamps completely dried unfortunately the clock does not work even with a new battery in it however it still makes for a gorgeous wall decor piece and it serves as a nice little spot to add a couple little decor pieces right on top I grabbed several of these large cutting boards at Dollar Tree. They were only $3. They look amazing on their own, but 
we're going to decoupage this one in a very unique way. Normally, I'd paint over this gem and call it a day, but we're going to actually sand off the design. That's right. This is going to just sand right on off of here. It's going to take a little bit of elbow grease, and it started making a bit of a mess. So, you know, I retreated to the patio. And just in case you're wondering, I'm using 120 grit. The lower grit on the sandpaper, the more coarse it is. The higher grit, the smoother it is. The more coarse it is, gives you the ability to really knock off any print like this. And people, since it was 120 grit, this was a little rough. You know what I'm saying? But I had to be careful because guess what? This is not solid wood. It's MDF. Okay, check out the back. All right, this is a huge indicator, not solid wood, just the top. So if we would have sanded it down too far, we wouldn't have that beautiful wood on there. And now to make it nice and smooth, I'm going to take this 800 grit sandpaper and just wrap it around my little finger sander. And we're going to go over this to make it smooth like butter for us to make a brand new DIY out of. We are finally at the good part. Sometimes prepping is like such a pain in the bootay. Oh, look at that. I forgot something. <laughs> And of course, I continue to forget that Dollar Tree has been stepping up their game with attaching things. So here I am because they have put these staples in this sucker trying to pry the <laughs> twine off of here by any means necessary. Those suckers were in there. But in all seriousness, it's a good thing that they're, you know, putting their stuff together better. Here is one of the beautiful napkins that we're going to be using to decoupage onto this piece. And one thing I really love about this napkin is each square has a different design on the background. It's like the same front background, you feel me? But the back has a different design. And since I'm asked constantly about layering and matching napkins, this is the second napkin we're going to use on here. We're going to tear both of these apart, put them together on our beautiful cotton board. And this napkin has the same exact design on four squares. To get us started, we are going to tear a little corner here to reveal the sneaky layers and rip them suckers right on off. So we just have our top decorative layer. And then we are going to use a little bit of water on a paintbrush to really give us a nice specific design. You can tear your napkin. I love doing that as well. But whenever you're doing details and you're using things like tissue paper or a napkin, since they're super thin, water can help guide you to get a precise design. Just make sure when you're using a napkin specifically, you wait for the ends to dry that you have water on. If you do not, while you're trying to apply that with the Mod Podge or whatever you're using as your medium, it's possible that sucker is going to rip or cause issues. So, you know, wait 10, 15 minutes, make sure all your little edges are dry from the water. To apply our napkins, we're going to use some cling wrap. And this is just the great value brand. It's a knockoff. It isn't even the actual name brands. And we're going to be using some sponges. I use these all the time and get asked all the time, what sponges do I use? These, these exact ones. And we don't even need a whole sponge because it's been my experience that if I use the whole sponge, it actually gets in the way. So I'll cut them in half and just use half the sponge and people a little tip after about seven to ten uses this is going to get a little crusty musty i will cut these up so i can use them for stencils and textured effects just a little tip you know waste not want not and we are going to be using some mod podge and fan brush fan brush to apply our napkin it's my favorite thing to actually use as an applicator whenever i'm doing napkin decoupage diys there are a lot of ways you can create decoupage art and as a crafter a diyer or an artist i like to believe that we all find what works for us through one means or another whether it's school a knack for it youtube and really i truly believe that there's no right or wrong way to go about it just create something that you love and as long as it makes you happy that's all that matters it doesn't have to be perfect whenever it comes to decoupage i like to believe less is more because napkins are super easy to destroy super easy so usually I will place my napkin down in one section and I'll either start at the top, the bottom, the side, the middle, whatever works for me at that time, depending on the project. And I will go little by little, section by section, applying a small amount of Mod Podge, using my sponge to press it down because the Mod Podge seeps up through the napkin. The sponge, since it's dry, it's grabbing that 
and then you can take your cling wrap and go over it smoothing it out and before i get the iron oil method people of the world talking about how that is the best way to get the most wrinkle free application you are so right it absolutely is but i talk about this a lot in my content doing it this way is quickest for me because i have to make content for you the iron oil method requires drying and waiting and waiting with this since i'm applying such a thin layer it dries really quickly and i can continue making whatever I'm DIYing. There are a couple ways you can go about layering napkins. For this particular project, I really wanted that cascade of hydrangeas that is going upwards to kind of meet right underneath of our little yellow Tweety Bird that we have up here. So I just took some more water on a little paintbrush and just kind of trimmed it in such a way that it blended together. Now you might be asking yourself, Brandy, why didn't you just paint the background and then apply your napkins? Well, there's a couple ways you can, like I said, decoupage. And I wanted the wood background to kind of blend into the napkins to make these look like they just went on the board. And keep in mind, whenever you're decoupaging a napkin or tissue paper and it's really thin, you can see whatever the background is. It'd be fairly translucent. So if you pick the color of your background that is sort of similar to your wood grain, it'll look really flawless. And um, <laughs> this goes without saying that if you iron it on, it's gonna be even more flawless, okay? <laughs> Once I was happy with the application of the napkins, I decided to take some more cling wrap and just kind of go over. There were some little sections where I got a little extra with the Mod Podge and really just wanted to kind of smoosh it out. And the cling wrap helps accomplish that. I let this dry for about 20 to 30 minutes, but if I'm recommending getting to the next part to you, I would say wait a couple hours. Okay, don't be a rebel like me, be patient. <laughs> it's not easy. We're now gonna take some of this distressing texture paste and put some stencils on here. But I also wanna add a little bit of color because I want everything to kind of match our napkins. So I'm taking a little, you know, bowl here and taking just a tiny bit with my tool. And you don't have to use one of these tools. I've showed it before. You can use a spoon, whatever. It doesn't have to be a fancy schmancy little plastic tool that costs like 99 cents from Rawls in a little pack of like mixed things. Don't let me perpetrate like, um, you know, I'm not fancy y'all. I'm not, okay. <laughs> I'm wing it and get it done. Now I just mixed some colors together until I got three that made sense to me with the napkin colors and that I felt I could also blend to get a little bit more colors. You wanna make sure that before you do anything like this, you want to try and tape it down. So I used some painter's tape and then held my pointer finger on my left hand at the top of where I wanted it to start and then worked my way down. And I used primarily this color and took some of the other colors and smooshed it in there to give us a little bit of variety. I felt like it matched the hydrangeas, it matched some of the red and the truck, or that's a truck, it's a car. <laughs> and it just kind of blended on down with our little stencil here. And ooh, look how pretty. And it dried like that, it really did. It dried like, well, you'll see in just a second. I decided to take some butterflies we had some butterflies in one of our little napkins and I had different stencils with different butterflies and since I didn't want to put anything on the handle part I wanted to actually leave the handle as a whole I put them going up the handle in different colors And because I cannot leave well enough alone, I grabbed some stamps, some were Dollar Tree stamps, some were some off Amazon I had, and just put some in different little sections. Allow this to dry a day and then put whatever sealer you wanna put over this. A 
of all the gems I could have grabbed out of this patio, I don't know why I grabbed this one. Probably because I thought this aquamarine color would go best on the little roofs I have. And I got a special napkin that I think is going to blend really well with it. As always, I like to look over my piece and see what I got to do. It's in really good shape other than it being a little dusty. And we're going to clean that up. But here's the color I'm going to use I got from Dixie Belle. It's called the Gulf, which... When you type in aquamarine, this is what they give you, okay? It's what Google said. This is what I'm going with. <laughs> and to clean it off, I'm going to use Dixie Bell's White Lightning. Now, I do spray this in it or pour this and mix it up in a spray bottle. It does not recommend that you do this, but it works fine for me, so I roll on with it. And when I have to paint inside, this is going to be our staging filming area. Isn't it fabulous? <laughs> Not really, but this is what I'm working with inside. And I have sanded down the piece and I've cleaned up the piece. So all the prep work is out of the way and I don't have to bore you with that. Now let's jump into grabbing us paintbrush. And yes, I have a whole separate box of paintbrushes for my furniture versus my crafting and my DIY wood pieces. Because don't every furniture artist have a completely separate separate box of tools <laughs> at their disposal. I feel like this piece is going to bleed, so I'm going to take some of this Dixie Bell Boss to avoid that. And we are not painting this entire thing, so for those of you that are like, oh, don't the poor wood, calm down. Just slow your roll. I'm not covering over all the beautiful wood. We are, however, yep, dog hair. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We are, however, <laughs> going to just paint the roofs and we're going to paint the shelves. So I put the, the boss on them to stop any bleeding from coming through that paint. See how it's drying right here? And this stuff is pretty magnificent. It doesn't take any time at all to dry. And look at that beautiful butteriness. I love opening a new can of paint. There's nothing like it. Except for maybe opening a Snickers ice cream bar. That's that's pretty magnificent. <laughs> okay. Back, back to painting. On our shelves, I'm just painting around the edges because I'm going to go over these with the white. We're gonna sand these out. You'll see what we're gonna do later. But right now, this is how we're doing it. So a little bit of this aquamarine or the golf color, and then we're gonna put some white on this. But we're not going to do that for the ruse. For the ruse, we are going to leave just this beautiful color. It really is absolutely just stunning. But then I don't know how I managed to hit this brush up against the light behind me and off it flew. Well, that just happened. Oh. Let me go wash this. And I definitely didn't wash it well enough or something, or maybe one fell from the sky. I don't know. But like within less than two minutes, I discovered a lingering hair that I had to address. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it has absolutely nothing to do with this one following me every single where I go and then wagging her beautiful fluffy tail everywhere. <laughs> On the ruse, I managed to be able to just do two coats, but not on these shelves. On these shelves, they took a good four coats. It doesn't usually take that many, but for whatever reason, this project, it did. A bit of water inside of a bowl, and then I'm going to mix both of the colors in with the water, and then we're going to apply it with an acrylic paintbrush. Or maybe this is a synthetic paintbrush. I'm not really sure, but it is not a chippy brush, and it's not like a rough brush. It's a soft bristle brush. <laughs> soft bristle brush and you want to make sure that whenever you do this technique because it's like a whitewash only it's not a whitewash we're kind of doing like a stain but it is a whitewash because <laughs> i don't know how listen it's like we created our own stain we're going to go in with the brush we're going to then wipe it back and this is going to once it dries you're not going to see it right off because Right now, it's just gonna kinda look like a mess. And if you have microfiber cloths, this is the time to use them. I did not, I'm using a napkin, but I also know how to go back and make sure I got all the bits of the napkin off so it doesn't look like a mess. If you're not that familiar with it, use a microfiber cloth because using a regular napkin is definitely going to leave you little crusty bits in different places. But when you're doing a wash like this, it doesn't really get stuck in there so much as it would just plain paint. Okay. 
am rambling. So we are going to let this dry and that takes several hours because we want it to be completely dry before we go about our next step. Now it's beautiful just the way that it is. However, we're going to decoupage and we're going to use this beautiful napkin that I have. And to attach the napkin, we're going to use this polyacrylic. And I like to use this on my furniture pieces versus Mod Podge. It's just a preference. You do you. I'm not judging you and how you do your projects. And to start out for something like this, I like to kind of take the napkin and size it up, kind of figure out what I'm doing, if I need to cut it, or we're gonna use another technique to kind of divide this piece. But first you wanna make sure you get all your layers. This one only seems to have one. So you wanna have your top layer of your napkin. So this way the back layer of the napkin doesn't come peeling and separating from the top layer. And listen, if you forget to peel it, you know what, just put extra sealant on the very top of it and dry it quickly that I've done it before okay it's okay for this next part we're taking a little bit of water and a paintbrush and we're going to just use that to find the center in between the napkin you can cut this off if you want to there's nothing wrong with that. I, at the time, was not completely sure if I was going to use the raggedy ends to wrap around the poles. So I wanted them to be very raggedy and did not want to sit and rip all of it because with a piece like this, it can be very time consuming and ripping the napkin in the exact precise spots. And I knew that I wanted the napkin to come exactly to the edges of where I put the sealer. But at the time, wasn't sure if I was gonna wrap them. So the water and then pressing along the napkin to divide it was the best option for me at the time. So here we're just taking a little bit of the sealer and placing our napkin piece exactly where we want it. And we're only going to put the sealer exactly where we plan on putting the napkin, not anywhere else. And when I'm doing a napkin, and this is why I like doing napkins on furniture, because you can do the tiniest bit and you can easily manipulate it. It's not thick like a piece of paper or fabric. And then if you have to cut it off or shave it down, it's not a huge deal to make that happen. When you have a thicker piece like a fabric or a paper, takes a little bit more work to actually kind of get rid of that excess or if you want it to curve into something it takes a little bit more finagling whereas with this you can sand it down a little bit and the napkin will kind of disappear and using something like this sponge actually helps to just press it down exactly into the spot that you want to do I also go little by little with the sealer I don't pile a lot on it has been my experience that the more you use the easier the napkin napkin is to disintegrate or bubble or just bunch in certain sections. I actually have a how-to decoupage or decoupage do's and don'ts video. I can link that in the description box for anyone that needs more tips and tricks on decoupaging. I also do want to say the sponge is a dry sponge. It is not a wet sponge. It is a dry sponge and I usually only use the sponge for the napkins. I get emails and comments and tons of questions about this all the time. The the sponge is dry and the reason why I love using this is because think of the napkin as you're putting the sealer down on your on your wood right and then you put the napkin over it once you press that sponge down what's it doing it's actually grabbing the sealer through the napkin so your sealer your extra sealer that's going in through your napkin is coming up and connecting with your sponge and it's actually stopping any extra from smooshing out anywhere or ripping the napkin another question i get asked all the time is do I go over my decoupage? Absolutely. Once it's completely dry on your napkins though, let it completely dry out and then make sure that you're only going over it in the exact sections that you want because anything else, once you go to sand it or trim it, it's going to stick. Some more hours later, I'm taking a little piece of sandpaper and I am deliberately, as you can tell, I decided not to wrap it around the edges and I'm glad that I didn't. I'm going around, look how beautiful that is. And I'm just sanding it down. And this is why you wanna make sure it's dry when you're sanding because if not, your napkin is going to bunch and move with 
your sandpaper. This way it does not. It comes off really clean and it's stunning. And at this point you can always go back in and add some blending around those edges. I'm not. I'm leaving it just like this but we are coming in like I said and we're going to sand down just to let that aquamarine the gulf color pop through these shells. This is another napkin piece, but I wanted to give you all some inspiration on how to decoupage a piece of furniture. So that's why I said in the beginning, if I was going to mess a piece up, this was the piece. I took and put some of these Prima molds with some wood glue. I did sand down the wood as you've seen first and then use some painter's tape to just hold this on. You don't have to press it tight. You know, you press it easy. And then off camera, I took some wood filler and put in the corners on the side. This bin primer is not my favorite, but it's what I had on hand. So that's what I used to do a layer of primer. And then while that was waiting, I took some of calcium carbonate joint compound and mixed the Dixie Bell paint up to get a textured effect in with this paint. Now this is all dry. This is after the bin has dried and look at, look at beauty out here. Just enjoying the day oh my god living her best life out there <laughs> anyhow this is what the mixture looks like with the joint compound the calcium carbonate and the dixie bell paint i started off by just smooshing the paint in these creases around the mold um just i wanted it to look cohesive so that really made the pieces blend together and started tapping this all over the place. The idea behind this piece was for it to look like a stone piece that it had been just like sitting out in some old, old garden for like ever. And I hope I accomplished that look. You'll have to let me know. <laughs> now here comes me sharing some spray paint because I didn't in the beginning, but now we're going to for those of you who love some spray paint. And this was so hard for me to not spray paint the whole piece because I wanted some of that beautiful color of the Dixie Belle paint to show through just slightly. And look how it just enhances the legs. So pretty. This is where I had to walk away. I know what you're thinking. Brandy, are you putting chalk paint on top of the spray paint? Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. If you wait for the spray paint to completely dry, it's not going to peel back off and you can create a beautiful little whitewash look on top of here. It is tedious and it is painstaking and yeah, but listen, I did it. It's over with. <laughs> and oh my gosh, this is my last napkin. So in this set, I was so nervous about messing it up and oh my gosh, it did not go the way I had planned. I had to walk away from this table several times with this blending process because you have to wait for this Waverly Wax to dry before you apply something else with it. If not, it just starts smearing weird. I don't know. Listen, when you don't have anything to dry, you use whatever, you know, it doesn't matter that it's a <laughs> piece of decor sitting near you, you just fan it dry. <laughs> Do what works, whatever works. Gotta do what you gotta do. I kept on alternating between the chalk paint and the antique Waverly Wax and think it turned out okay. What do you think? I'm going to rip the top off and we're going to use an 80 grit sandpaper with my cordless Ryobi sander to make that happen. But of course, having a 
good time with the Xena. Oh my. My kids have such a time at my expense. <laughs> like, I tell you what, man, you should hear some of these kids. I did go by hand and take an 80 grit piece of sandpaper and do a scuff sand over the entire piece before I took a primer and went over this. I needed to tape the bottom off. You want to make sure that if you're going to stain a section that you tape a section. And they have other stuff that you can buy people for this to protect your I'm just this is how I'm rolling with it okay paper towels painter's tape covered the top and then I'm just going to prime the bottom and put some white rust-oleum paint on here I feel like it's beautiful out let's get the spray painting done instead of hand painting because you know sometimes hand painting is tedious and I'm just not in a mood I want to spray paint. <laughs> I like to spray paint. I put one more coat on this and brought it in the house. Now, if you're not familiar with this, people, bear with me. I wanted to decoupage this beautiful vintage looking napkin I picked up from Christmas Tree Shops. They have beautiful napkins. And I watched a video that Holly over at Hot Humble Pie did. And she was burning the, burning the edges to give it like this vintage look. So please be safe, people. <laughs> like at this I am not responsible so if you're gonna burn something just be I watched Holly do it I thought this would be an amazing add-on I love Holly so I decided to do that with this piece and put the napkin on there with some Mod Podge now I then take this stencil that I've used before and go over top of the decoupage in different variations of colors giving it a different look blends to because we're going to do some stain art on the top so I really kind of wanted all of these to just kind of blend in with everything now now that it's all said and done, future me is telling you I wish I would have put more napkins underneath the stencils, but I was already in it at this point and did not feel like starting over. I paid $15 for the piece. I really didn't want to spend days and days and days because I'm not reselling it for hundreds of dollars and it's just not going to be worth the hassle of ripping it all off and redoing it. So I then distressed the same way I did with the crate and added in some of the color distress and then in a little bit you'll see we go over with the sandpaper and don't be afraid to get messy people get your fingers in there smush it all around you know that's the fun of it to get dirty look I love when I'm all done and my hands are just 10 different colors because I'm like man I was having a good time now it's time for my favorite part. We are going to do some stain art on the top of this and blend some colors in. As you can see here, I have them all set up so you can get a good idea of about how much water and about how much paint is going into this. I do have other videos where I go a little bit more into detail, so I can link that below for you. I just posted a laundry one recently, but I'm gonna keep this short and sweet, people, short and sweet. I'm starting this off with my lightest color and allowing that to kind of soak in here. I do try to wait a couple minutes in between switching colors to let it dry. And then as I start the blend and get a beautiful blend on top of a beautiful blend, I'll let it dry for 30 minutes here, an hour there. It really depends on the weather. Sometimes it's warmer, sometimes it's colder. On this particular day, I was able to get all of this done in just a few hours. I do want to stress, though, if you go to do this, it's so important to go the entire length of the wood grain. I It will be splotchy, people. It'll be splotchy if you stop in the middle. You want it to look like this where it's just so smooth. And once you continue layering this, it starts to blend and it just looks beautiful. And also, if you get in certain areas you have too much, don't be afraid to take a paper towel or your dry sponge and take off some of that paint. But here it is. Here it is as I let it dry for one last time. That was the very end of it. 
<laughs> and I put a poly on it to seal it. Now, this is distress, right? We're distressing. So I'm going to go in here with my sandpaper and distress all these little edges. I do leave some spots out because I didn't want to just do the whole thing. I wanted it to look kind of organic. So I just did heavy in some spots, light in other spots, and did go in between all of these little wood pieces. I really love the way that this aged piece turned out. It's so stunning. I think Dollar Tree's glass plates are my second favorite piece of glass to pick up and DIY on. There are just a lot of possibilities, especially when you're going to decoupage something like this tissue paper onto it. And people, I want to introduce to you Cottage Dreams. This is one of my personal designs. This is my TDS brand that is going to be coming out in August on my website. It is official. I will have my own brand of decoupage paper available for you. This is tissue paper and the prints are 17 by 23 inches so they're pretty big. As soon as I got this in stock I could not wait to do something with it. This is one of my favorite prints right now and I have a lot of them. <laughs> Even though the paper reminds me a lot of a napkin it is a little bit more durable so I do love that about this. More information will be coming out on this paper in August so keep an eye out for that. We're going to trim this down using a little bit of water on the tip of a round paintbrush. And I'm gonna give about an inch around the plate because we're gonna be applying this to the back of the plate. So obviously it's not gonna be an exact science. And this way, if we have a little hangover, we're just gonna get that off of there at the end of the day. It's not gonna be a big deal, but this way it covers the entire back of our paper. Plate, I mean the plate. I chose to go with two of the houses on this print. You could of course do whatever you want. I wanted to make like a little set with the two plates so that way they kind of match. I decided to take my heat gun and dry off around the edges. Now I will tell you with this tissue paper, you can use water to help smooth it out. It is thin so you're going to have to be mindful with that. But I decided to do my typical and dry it off before applying it to our piece and using the Mod Podge. There are two ways you can apply this that I feel you would get really good results. One is to coat the center of your plate and then apply your piece and then go around the edges applying little by little. And this just ensures that you're gonna have a good hold without a lot of bubbles and a lot of wrinkles. I am using some cling wrap and a fan brush to apply this just like I would if I was using a napkin. I do feel like this is thin enough that I can use my fan brush and still get really good results. And the cling wrap works really well to smooth out any wrinkling. Now when you get to this point, you have to obviously attach the edge. So I did this in little sections and then pressed that part of our paper onto the plate. And I decided to take a second here to really show you guys why I love using fan brushes. And I talk about how thin the edges are because they really squeeze in up to where you already have that attachment between your piece and whatever you're placing on there, whether it's tissue or paper. And as you can see here, those tiny little bristles are just smooshed in there as far as they can up to where they're meeting the section that's already attached. And it really gives you a flawless attachment. It does take some patience 
And some people ask, why don't you just do the whole piece? Mod Podge dries really quick, people. Don't start me lying to you. So sometimes when you go over the entire piece and if you don't apply enough Mod Podge, certain sections will already have dried. This will create bubbles with your napkin or your paper. So you gotta move quickly. Then you have to worry about if you don't wanna use this method and you wanna cover the whole thing, you might use too much Mod Podge, making sure that it doesn't dry and then that also will give you bubbles. I know it's like, oh, what does and what doesn't. So just find a technique that works best for you. But as you can see here, it's pretty flawless. People, I love giving y'all options. So of course, on the second plate, I had to show you exactly what I was talking about and coat the whole back of this with a nice, healthy layer of Mod Podge. Now I sped it up here. So this way you don't have to <laughs> sit and watch me slowly paint this. But I was moving quickly, at least in my mind, I was moving quickly because I wanted to make sure that this didn't start drying and I did put a decent amount of Mod Podge on here. You feel me? So I then took the cling wrap and started going around the edges. And like I said, this is thin, but it's a little bit more adorable than a napkin. So I felt a little bit more fuzzier inside, you know, smooshing this around until I didn't. There was a tear. As soon as I seen it happen, I immediately stopped and then picked the plate up and gingerly started to put it back in place. I took a little bit more Mod Podge. I put it there so this way that the paper would stick. And then I just went right on over it with my finger doing a little tappity tap tap tapping. And it's seamless. You cannot even tell that there was a tear. So that's another thing I do really like about this paper is that if you catch yourself before it gets too wild, you can fix your mistake and you won't know where that tear was. Whenever you're decoupaging on glass, you have some options here, but one, see how my little fingers are dangling behind our plate here? It's kind of translucent without anything behind it. You can see through it and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but I wanted my design to pop out a little bit. So I'm gonna take some Mod Podge and seal this up before we apply a nice layer of white paint on here. And I just want to pause for a moment just to bring acknowledgement to the fact that someone at these manufacturing companies are skipping steps, okay? Because lately when I've been getting paintbrushes, I've been having to do the step that whoever is skipping by putting a little smoosh of glue in the tip of my brush to attach the stem of my brush. Like what's happening here? Who's forgetting to actually make sure these are attached, okay? Because they're just causing me extra work. Anyhow, let's move on. I let these dry and completely trimmed around the edges and these plates are absolutely stunning. Say hello to my little garden gnome. Well, this sucker really is a little, it's kind of big. It's like, you know, over a foot. I picked this up from Aldi's for like eight bucks. I seen it, I was like, it has to come home with me. And it needs a base of some white everywhere we plan on decoupaging. This is gonna help the napkins that we're going to apply onto this for the designs to just pop out. While that's sitting off to the side drying, we're gonna take some clay molds and we're gonna take my favorite paper clay and we're going to create a few little accents to attach onto our note. My Amazon affiliate link is down in the description box. It does have the paper clay. This is my favorite clay to use. Feel free to use whatever makes you fuzzy inside. I just personally like this clay. I struggle with hand grip strength. It's super easy to mold even after it's set for a little bit and I can sand this down. So I really like using it even on furniture pieces. The me in the video wasn't sure what pieces I wanted to use, so I just made a bunch. Here are the three napkins that we're gonna be pulling different sections from. In case you can't tell, I wanted to kind of keep the green <laughs> as the one color that kind of tied everything together. And full disclosure, people, okay, it took me about six hours to create this piece. I know, I know what you're thinking, but if you love decoupage, it's a good idea. First up, I'm gonna start with any sections I want painted and we're gonna use these grays on the beard. 
I'm also going to take some black as well and put in those little deep sections to give us a little bit more depth in it. And obviously paint your beard on your gnome, whatever color you want, or don't paint any sections. If you want to decoupage your whole piece, you go right ahead. This was just the design that I had thought out and kind of sketched before I started to do this piece. And people, just a little tip, it has been my experience that if you do wanna paint something, paint it first, decoupage, and then you can go back and touch up. If I decoupage and then paint, I tend to make more of a mess and sometimes ruin sections that I decoupage, and you really can't go back over that and fix it. But you know, you do what you want to do. I'm just giving you my opinion. I took a couple different tan colors to paint the little nose and our hands. And then I went in with some shading. Nothing too fancy schmancy. Just, you know, to add a little bit of depth with those pieces. And then I had to come back in with some of that gray and touch up around the edges of our little tan paint. Because that made a little bit of a mess. Since part of this video is me trying to get as many projects as I could in one day, I had to be very purposeful with creating this and allowing things to dry, especially because I knew this was going to take me almost all day. I spent some time ripping up the napkin and trying to put little sections because I know I wasn't going to be able to just do this in one piece. There were too many curves going on. So I was purposeful with tearing up little sections to make sure I had designs of the napkin so I didn't like just rip sunflowers in half and then you couldn't see a whole piece. I decided not to paint the bird and the trim around the gnome. I was not sure what colors would go really well once I had the napkins on here and I didn't want to just paint them colors, get the napkins on here, and then have the colors not make sense. So I just decided to wait. And if I'm being honest about that, I was kind of nervous because I did not want to mess up the decoupage with the paint once I had it all done. So tips for decoupaging something that is not completely flat. You're going to most likely need to tear your napkin as you're applying your piece. You can wrap it gently, press it down gently, and also use the cling wrap to help reduce the wrinkles. But be mindful as you're pulling the cling wrap around whatever type of curves you have because if it's super wet that cling wrap is just going to rip your piece and move it as you're moving the cling wrap along. I always try to use really thin layers of Mod Podge and go little by little as you can see it took me a long long time just to do this little cap right here and then once I had the largest piece on right in the front so this way the bulk of the design was right there. I started piecing the smaller sections that I had torn out in the back so it looked like one piece. And people don't be afraid of any excess overhang. See how like around the rim there's extra napkin? I don't have any Mod Podge there. So that means that the part of the napkin that's sitting there, it's not going to stick there at the end of the day. We're going to go back and clean all this up. I'm going to show you in just a couple minutes. And right here, my friends, is one of the reasons I love using fan brushes. You can have a little bit of Mod Podge on that and go around all the edges. It peels them back just so gently, and then you can plop a little bit right there and gently fold the napkin right on over. It seals those edges up super tight, especially whenever you're doing a little piece project like this one. Once that cap was dry, it was time to move on to a little gnome booty. And we needed to lather that sucker on up with a nice amount of Mod Podge. <laughs> All up in that crease from top to bottom. And I did that actually from the neck down. This way we could put the bulk of our napkin right on the biggest piece of real estate <laughs> that we had. I'm so sorry. Right on the biggest piece of real estate we had back there. So we could just piece together around the sides. And I made sure to do my due diligence. <laughs> Let's press it up in there so we got a nice wedgie. I'm sorry. Okay, now moving on. I love this napkin, but we're only going to be using the green part for our shoes. I want it to keep the little gold piece at the very bottom of our gnome shoe and then have the design take over kind of the entire top. 
this was the most time consuming you would think that the arms were, but oh no, these shoes were. And mostly because I had to really go around the beard and do this tiny section by tiny section, keeping the gold piece aligned with the actual sole of the bottom of the shoe. And you'll notice I don't have my fan brush in here. I have a tiny synthetic brush that I'm using. It's still, the bristles are super soft, just like the fan brush that I use. And it's also tiny enough for me to get in these little places that we have to <laughs> kind of push the napkin in here. I did an entire row of this and then came back in and pieced little sections of the prints on the top of the shoe. When all those sections dried before I started the sleeves, I'm like, let's take a little clay tool. Well, I used a couple really, with a little bit of water on a paintbrush and go around our edges. So I just went and took that water around the edges. So once the Mod Pod stopped, then the napkin was just hanging there. This allowed me to take those clay tools, get in those creases and pull off any excess napkin where the paint began or the next section began. And before I put the sleeves on, I wanted to do this. So this way the sleeves actually overlapped the flower print and met up with the beard. I hope that makes sense. This is extremely time consuming. So prepare yourself if you go to do a project like this. This is probably going to take you the largest amount of time. And mostly because even though you're separating this with the water, sometimes the napkin can bunch in little sections and you really got to make sure you adjust for that. Even though there's no Mod Podge, there's like little napkin ball pieces you want to smooth out before you carry on to apply your next layer or to put your sealer over or do your paint. For the sleeves, I kind of did the same thing I did with the boutte area. <laughs> and I took a big section over the largest part of the arm and then pieced together the smaller sections around the sides. I was so happy when I got to this point because as you can imagine, <laughs> you're letting this dry, you're working on it, you're letting it dry. And then it's like you're starting to put the finishing touches on it, coming in, fixing the paint, adjusting to where the decoupage ends. And it just really started coming alive for me at this point. And it was also about this time that I realized what colors I was going to do the trim and our little Tweety Bird, which I decided on a deep brown for the trim and a little yellow for our bird. I painted up off camera our little clay pieces that we had molded and I used tacky glue to attach them. And because I can't leave well enough alone, I decided to take some gold gilding wax by Dixie Bell and go over our bird and our trim. Walmart has a bunch of ceramic pieces for a decent size and a decent price. This was $3.94 and I love owls. So home it came and we're about to get to business with this little piggy bank. First things first, I took its little plug <laughs> out of the bottom of it there and I gave it a nice coat of white matte paint. And painting it is completely up to you. The napkin I'm using has a white base and I want it to be flawless between the napkin and the color of the owl. As you can see here, there is a slight variation in the color between the original and adding the white paint. This beautiful napkin I picked up recently at TJ Maxx and I knew exactly what I was gonna use this for. I could not wait to get this napkin on here. What I was really surprised at, which is not often, is how big the napkin was and the fact that the pattern carried on for almost the entire napkin. I loved having so much of this print to be able to mess with and I had the whole other side of the napkin left as well. So I just stashed that away for another DIY. You know what I'm saying? We just hold on to it and hoard it until we need it again. When you're working with a piece like this, there are many ways you can attack it. But for me, I knew that I wanted this 
to be decoupaged in the direction that makes sense when you stare at a piece. So I want it the head to be decoupaged a certain way, the belly, the back. I want it the print to actually face naturally the way that I think it would if I'm staring at it. I hope that makes sense. So for me, I had to make sure that I was applying the exact sections of this napkin in the exact places and then piecing together certain parts because I didn't want to just apply the whole print over the whole ceramic piece. And in order for me to be able to accomplish this the way that I envisioned it, there were several steps I had to take. One was getting rid of the edge of this napkin. On almost every single napkin, it has this little edge. And usually I leave them and don't fuss over them at all. But for this particular thing, since we're going to be glossing this, I wanted to make sure everything was flawless and we could not tell where the napkin began and our ceramic piece started. For our medium, we're going to be using Mod Podge Gloss and for the application, I'm using a fan brush. I'm a huge fan of the fan brushes because I'm able to use them to kind of smush in between and double check making sure if our napkins get attached really well. And to help us accomplish this, to make sure that all the pieces are pressed in really well, we're going to use a bunched up little piece of cling wrap. This is going to really smooth out our napkin and make sure it gets in all the little grooves that are on our piggy bank. I cannot stress enough how this should be done in tiny sections. Once you get this tiny little spot I'm doing right here attached, you're going to then flip the napkin up and see how that little bit that I just did in that little spot and you're going to carry on. If you want to just slap your napkin on here, do the whole thing, you go right ahead. But if you want a flawless look and when you see the end result, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. You want a flawless look, you do this piece by piece and section by section. And as you're going through with this right here, you're going to see where you can naturally tear this and bend it around the grooves that are in the porcelain piece. And I highly recommend checking the edges of the napkin as you go. Before you start removing the excess of the napkin, make sure that it's dry because we're going to be using water on the edge of a paintbrush to find those natural creases where you ended your Mod Podge and tear this. The napkin will gently pull away from the section that does not have any Mod Podge on it. And you want to also make sure that you're not applying the water on the napkin where the Mod Podge is, it will reactivate the Mod Podge if it is not waterproof Mod Podge and this wasn't. So I wanted to make sure that I clarify that before you guys are like, let me just paint it over here and then tear it. It will tear in the wrong spot. So definitely be very ginger doing this. And in case you're wondering, because I did not speed up this section, it took me over three hours to create this little piece with the decoupaging. I take my decoupage art very seriously. <laughs> But on a side note, I have not made one of these for you guys. I have been asked to make one of these for all of you. If you enjoyed this piece, let me know in the comments below. I have a ton of ceramic pieces I'd love to get my hands on and decoupage with you. Also, be mindful because <laughs> it will stick to your fingers like it's going there. The napkin bits will break off if you have Mod Podge on your hand. For the front of the face and the sides of the face, I wanted to make sure that they weren't completely covered by the florals. And that the florals, like I said in the beginning, were facing the proper way when you're looking at the piece. So this way you didn't look at it and see upside down flowers or anything like that or too many. You could differentiate the fact that there were eyeballs right there, there's a nose, there's a belly. So I just carefully placed certain pieces of the napkin and then moved forward with that. I did the same thing with the belly and pieced it together as well. And this cling wrap, just kind of using that to attach, it really gets in the grooves so perfectly. I let this dry for about 30 minutes and then came back in with our paintbrush with a little bit of water and went around all the ends of the napkin 
where I did not have any Mod Podge and remove the excess. And you're going to want to take your time with this because you're going to notice that certain little sections of the napkin will bunch where the water and the Mod Podge meet and you're going to just kind of pull that apart. You can use a fingernail or a clay tool to do that so this way it's a smooth transition from the napkin to the beast. And then you can take a little bit of Mod Podge like I'm doing here on a tiny paintbrush and going in those grooves to just kind of fold out the napkin to just blend in the creases and it just looks so amazing. Now you noticed I didn't decoupage the feathers, right? That's because we're gonna use some mica powder <laughs> in these two little paint brushes. One's for the mica powder, this one right here, and the other one is for some brown paint we're gonna use to go in between the feathers. I decided, so mica powder is definitely messy to work with, be mindful, but I wanted some shine. And these have a really nice shine on them that kind of just pops out with a little bit of like, I don't know, like a silver going on, like a glitter. You know what I mean? So I really just wanted to add a little bit of something. I did leave some of the feathers white. So this way it blended in with the whole piece. I used a couple colors that match the napkin, of course. And how dark you want these really just depends on how much you kind of smear in your colors. Now, obviously, you've seen all the powder. I was like, <laughs> just blowing it off as I went. I let this sit for a couple minutes and then came back in with some of that white paint and just tied in between where the napkin ended and some spots that I felt like the mica powder made a little bit of a mess on. And then in the process of all this, decided against the brown and then used the green. And honestly, I don't think it mattered because it turned out looking black to me for the feathers. You could leave it as it is, but I wanted to add this in here just to give a little bit of pop in the feathers but get some unity as a whole that they were kind of all connected and people your lines don't need to be perfect you know what I'm saying just schmooshing one in there because we're going over this anyway once I was finished with this I took a little bit of that white paint on my finger and then did a dry brushing over all the feathers to kind of just blend this in and then I let that dry and took some of Dixie Bell's gold gilding wax and gave all of the feathers and the little feet a gentle little smoosh. If you have stuck around this long, thank you for hanging out with me today, people. Why the owl, you may ask? Why is it my favorite out of everything I have decoupaged since I started YouTube? It's just flawless. I have decoupaged many, many, many things, and it is one of the few pieces when I look at it, I cannot tell at all where the napkin begins and the piece begins. It's just stunning to me. Let me know if your number one pick would have been different. As always, I appreciate all of you and until next time, bye.